Yeah, I think I'm gonna do the punch in thing. I'll hide yeah, self view. Can you cool. hear me at all? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Loud and clear. Oh. This time, this time, this time, this time. It's different. With Peter and Chris. This time, this time, this time, this time. It's different. Hello and welcome to the Call In Mockery Show. I'm Colin Mockery, your host, where every week I show that you don't need a lot of knowledge to share wisdom. And I'm the uh, co-host, uh, Dr. Pete. Uh, we're here to answer your questions. Uh, the advice given out by me on this episode should not be taken as uh, medical advice. Uh, as always, if you have real medical concerns, always consult an actual physician. Although I am for sure an actual, like a full on, although I actually am for sure an actual full doctor, uh, any advice I give is probably really good advice, but you should not use it. Um, and none of the advice that I give can be used against me in a court of medical, in a medical legal situation. And uh, I, of course, as always, I'm the co-host. I'm Chris, I'm just a guy. And you could listen to, you could take what I say as, as fact. Uh, you should, it's all medical. Take it, take it, and then sue me in the end. It's all good advice and I stand by it. You know, I'm not a coward, so. so medically, uh, medically, I have to be a coward. Yeah. So, so how's every how's everybody doing? This is uh, this is great. It's a it's a new week, new advice. Yeah, yeah I'm doing a first. Well, I was doing better until I heard your disclaimers. I feel you really got to work on those a little bit. I mean, yeah, we, uh, that's <laughs> fair. And I, uh, we should write them out um, and uh, and, yes. and, and, and practice them a little bit more. But mine's uh, like a medical a legal one. That was a, that was a full on legal. I'm supposed <laughs> to say that my lawyers <laughs> told me. It was a little, and, a little uh, rambly, Doctor Pete. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay. And of course, uh, running Once the uh, the call board as as always uh, on the show is our uh, our intern and and call in board operator Becca. Becca, how are you doing? Um, hi, good. Thank you for having me uh, again. Again, it's your job. Uh, we didn't have you. Yeah, it's not uh, a have you it, situation. It is, you have to show up. In fact, like we're, we're paying I'm, you. It's an honor to be here. Okay, you don't have to not be honored. honored. It's just yeah. we're we're honored to have you, and then we can. Thank you so yeah. much. Okay. Great to be a guest. You're not a guest, and again, Becca, just not a guest though, for sure. This is still my show, correct? Oh yes. right, sorry. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Show. I just wonder. Uh, I didn't want to. Uh, I don't want to pull any rancor in it, but it is the call-in mockery show. Yeah, it's absolutely. Right in the title, yeah. And it's your thing, of and, course. And, and maybe absolutely. we should get to. Maybe we should get. Let's, this uh, let's help some people. So, Becca, that would be when you. Uh, I don't have a the, question. No, 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 you open the floor, you open the calls up. Open the calls up, meaning yeah, there's a thing I'm going to phone. Oh, I see. Yes, I'm checking my phone and... So if anybody's calling in, Becca, yeah. remember the rehearsal? Are the boards lighting up right now? I thought the you board. said you didn't want to take any calls while the show is happening. You don't want the phone to ring because that could disrupt the sound. Oh, dear. Okay. I can... Do you want me to put the phone back on the hook? Colin, I thought... <laughs> <laughs> Colin, yeah, I yes, thought you Becca, that would that would be great. Please put yes, the phone back yes, on. I thought you rehearsed this with her, Colin. I thought this was all good. To no, go. I gave her this big speech on how in this sort of thing I'm like the Han Solo and she's the Chewbacca, and I thought that that sort of um, <laughs> oh my gosh, her, said in oh my mind, gosh, I she, get it. Now totally you get it. get it. You are my right hand Wookie. You are there to help me do what I have to do. You support, and then I'll support you at times. Thank you so much for your support. All right, Chewie. <laughs> that's great. Okay, I'm putting the phone back on the hook now. Okay, that's great. Okay, okay. Whenever, thanks. Maybe there, are maybe several, there are several, there are several, there's like a beep, like there's a voice. I think there's several voice messages. Okay, so Can that's you? people calling in, and now they've left voicemails because you didn't answer. So, yeah, okay, you answer. yeah play, play a voicemail. Okay. You, can you play a voicemail? Hi, Colin. Uh, with uh, everything that's been going on in the world lately, uh, I've, I've been having um, memory problems, just having trouble remembering things like uh, like places I've been and, and, and people's names and um, the days of the week, uh, what year it is, when my birthday is supposed to be happening. 
uh, I was wondering if you might be able to uh, help out with, I don't know, some exercises or something. I know you mostly do uh, unscripted work, but uh, um, uh, it's, uh, what's it called? Um, you know, where you don't have a script and, and you're still on stage and doing <laughs> things. Uh, anyway, I, I can't really remember why I called. I guess I guess maybe I was wondering whose line it was anyway in the end. Mm. Thanks so much. Obviously, Great. in a lot of these cases, the first things that go is being concise. Um, obviously, this person uh, totally missed the boat on that. I mean, it's hard right now because obviously um, – at times you do forget what day it is because days have no meaning during, you know, when you're in lockdown, when mm -hmm. you're in a, the same place day after day, doesn't matter. People's names, only they care. So, <laughs> um, you know what? A good buddy, hey there, Chief, although Chief, not as much as we used to. Mm -hmm. uh, baby, <laughs> sweetie, uh, or just throw an initial out. There's a, you know, you got a one in 26 chance <laughs> that well also you don't x's and q's and u's usually but you go hey there's c it usually fits with any of their names but there are little memory exercises you can do start with the alphabet that's a simple one again 26 letters you go in order <laughs> then there's one where you start in the middle of the alphabet go backwards go to the end of the alphabet and go back then go forward mm -hmm. go back go back again and within Two hours, you've really strengthened that part of your brain that deals with memory. And uh, I actually forgot the rest of your question. So, yeah, and I and I forgot too. It was it just sort of petered out at the end. It was, it yeah. was a very very okay. very, very right. boring question. And if I could just uh, just, just sort of point Peter Carlone oh, out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. And if I could medically, just a, yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll chime in medically, but I just, if we can keep out uh, for terms that are hurtful, uh, like mm -hmm. petered out, uh, that'd be great. We'll just keep uh, keep oh, uh, in mind that that's I'm sorry. Well, a super yeah. super hurtful thing. <laughs> um, medically medically speaking, uh, what I like to practice is uh, something that I call uh, uh, tr um, traumatic memory. Um, okay. So, All and right. it's not as crazy as it sounds. It's not no, spicy. No, but let's say you go to a, a you know a library, or let's say you go to a, a pizza place that you really want to remember. I find the best thing to do is make a scene there, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Slap somebody, mm -hmm. um, preferably the person behind the counter. Just ah, slap them. There's it's going to cause a scene, and that's going to stick in your memory as like, oh, right. that's the the place I go to that I got yelled at because I slapped right. some. And, and then you're going to remember. Will, they'll, they'll bring it up too. In fact, they'll remind yeah. you constantly. Oh, there's that guy. You. There's the slap guy. And you're there's like, the slap. Oh, guy. right, I'm the slap guy. Everywhere he goes, yeah. he slaps somebody. Uh, there's that. Let's avoid him. Then, yeah. well, what's it, I mean, what's nice is that is that it, it builds memories for everyone. Yeah, not just you. That, that's so true. I, I medically didn't even think about that, that it's actually everyone's memory at that point. So that's perfect. Here's, uh, you also don't have to think of everything medically. Some things you just think. <laughs> well, and that's true. Uh, that's true, Colin. But, you know, again, as, as the medical uh, co-host, I think, uh, you know, medically speaking, uh, you know, isn't everything that you think kind of a medical event? You well, know, I'm not sure. If you're talking about slapping people, where's the medicinal part of that? You're talking about mm -hmm. violence. It, there's no... no <laughs> well, the sl yeah. okay, the slap I would call a uh, kinetic medical device, kind of like a cast oh, or oh, like right, a right. you know like a cane. But then this slap, but then the memory is formed through the neuron neuron activity from your hand all the way to your brain. You're like, oh, that slap felt good. All right, well, I'll I'll give you that because I kind of lost interest. Yeah, <laughs> and I did too. Yeah. Becca, how are you doing? You still on uh, uh, focused? Yes, I got as far as M L K J I H G. Oh, you're doing the exercise. Oh, the alphabet. I see. Yeah, the yeah. alphabet exercise. And also, you could also maybe work on remembering what your job is during the show. That might be a nice, also a little. little <laughs> um, I, I'm really, I am trying. Okay, oh, I no, do no, actually. No, I have someone. I have someone on the phone. Oh great. oh, great. Okay, great. All right. Yeah. Okay, listen to this. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice Oh, message shoot. Box. Oh, no. Okay. Hold right. on. I can I can figure it out. Hold on. Oh, no, 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 no. That was the wrong one. Hold on. Here you go. Oh, yeah. All right. Maybe you just want to play another another voicemail there. No, 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 no. no. I got it. This one's going to be... No, no. That's okay. 
No, no, sorry. These are people who are I. Are you calling in a, again? Are you, you calling don't them call back? People. Yeah. You're not calling people. You're I feel like you said you people. wanted to talk to the people that called on the phone and left a voicemail. So that's what I've been trying to do. I've been calling everyone back. Why don't we just listen to more voicemails? Yeah, well, let's just listen to another voicemail. Okay. Can you put on yeah. another voicemail? Yeah. No, hold on. Yeah. Hi. I think my dad might be QAnon, but I don't want to ask him if he's QAnon because I don't want to let him know about it if he doesn't know about it. So how can I figure out if my dad is QAnon without asking him? Thanks. Now, Colin, you you really like the QAnon stuff, don't you? You were telling me earlier. What's yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, a lot of people, um, you know, kind of make fun of it and say a lot of it is outlandish. But at one point, people thought gravity was weird. Uh, so <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good yeah. point. You know what? We uh, there's uh, things beyond our uh, Ken Horatio. That's kind of a uh, that was a Hamlet reference, but kind of not the right way to say that line. But um, here's the thing. Whatever you do, don't let your father know that you've twigged on to him. Mm. He will cut you. Mm. Um, mm. There is this new thing out that if you cut um, a relative and get some of the blood onto your hand, it will spell out the next thing you're supposed to do tomorrow. It's like a quick... Uh, <laughs> ready to do list kind of thing using right. the blood of uh, it has to be a, a close relative so a son a, an actual blood you can't just cut your wife say right right uh, it's fascinating i've been reading a lot about it and i <laughs> um there, oh, there's stuff out there you guys would not believe i'm not kidding yeah like what, what kind of what kind of stuff okay all right stuff? snakes just with snakes okay they're planning something on uh, september 25th 2021 where every snake in the world is going to connect to each other, they will grab the tail of the snake in front of them yeah. and circle the world 15 times, mm -hmm. then rotate it and change the axis of the world so that only their kind will survive. You know, I'm so glad that you're saying that. I'm glad you're bringing that up because I've heard that and I was like, that has no. to be true. That has to be true. But is anybody else? Does it? Are people reading about? Like, uh, do they have their ears shut? Do they have their no. eyes shut to this stuff? No. Like, what? Open your eyes, people. Yeah. Rule of thumb, don't trust anything that can move without legs. Exactly. And so to, so to answer your question, caller, uh, I might just oh. uh, sit down with your father one day and just, <laughs> just ask him what sorts of things he's interested in or uh, wait until he goes for one of his regular bathroom breaks and then just check his search history. Yeah, mm. or accidentally cut your hand and see if he goes for your blood. <laughs> Becca, do we have a do we have another voice? Do any are the are the callers calling in? You're sipping on a ginger ale. <laughs> You're pretty relaxed right now. Well, it's little. It's a <laughs> no, small yeah, ginger Becca. ale. <laughs> I just thought it. You said I could have, I could get lunch, but all they have here is a vending machine. Becca, you're at your. I think I thought you were at your home. <laughs> Yeah, we've done. I, I understand how you're hungry. We've done a hard 15 minutes of work. Yeah, <laughs> Becca, are you sake. going into the office right now? Are you Are you at the That's office? How? Yes. We we're not so supposed we'll to go to the at home order. You're not supposed to go we're into the. I didn't know what that meant. It, for <laughs> of course, we're complex. I mean, it's in the it's in the name. It's in the it's in the words. Stay at home. I mean, I didn't order. I mean, but then. That's fine. I'll stay at home to be at home. But what do you do for work? There's not a stay at work home order. Oh, God. So I, I've been coming in, but there's nothing left except very small ginger ale in the – so that when you said well, you can have, buy me lunch, I've been getting these instead. And so I have had about 17 of them. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I've been really trying and I think – you know, the the issue is that we haven't had a lot of calls in the last couple of hours. Our show is so popular. It's a very popular show. You have to have the phone on the hook. No, I mean, I did put it on the hook, but no one's been calling in the last couple of hours because I thought that we were on central time. It, I, I, okay. Do you think we can actually change our time zone? Are you thinking, oh, I, think, I guess today we're going to do central. Is that what you're thinking? <laughs> that we're going away from what we usually do? The time zone we're in? I thought time is a matter of, of your own understanding and perspective, like you said in last week's show. 
Okay. You well, did say that. So you yeah, do yeah, listen. I, I so did. You are okay. listening. That, that's, that's on true. me. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it explains all the voicemails. There are several. Okay, yeah. well, maybe we can. Can we have some of those? Maybe? Yeah, hold on. Yes, hello, Petir and Christ and Colin. <laughs> I have a bit of a quandary for you. You see, I'm in grade nine and I have a bit of a crush <laughs> on my teacher. But I don't know if I should tell him, you see, because there's a bit of an age difference. <laughs> I am 81 years older. What I'm should 81? I do? Okay, I got your gifts for this one. Um, all right, first of all, this grade nine student, I, I have to say, although um, amazing, how many times do you think she was held back? <laughs> I'll try to do the math on that. All right, so it sounds like she was held back about 67 times. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that was not a real accent. <laughs> she was like trying accent? to obviously protect herself. From, oh. Um, yeah. Oh, it was like an identity thing. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're starting to get a picture of this person a little bit, like a little yeah. concerned with their identity, probably ashamed um, that they're not able to pass through grade school yet. Mm -hmm. Yep, and has attached this unnatural affection for her teacher, which of course can happen yes. a lot. Um, you know, fall, uh, falling in love and I'm doing air quotes um, with a um, authority figure, but yeah. it's, it's just um, unless it's a really hot smoking teacher, it usually goes nowhere. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I, I yeah. would even say, don't so much worry about the age difference. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a uh, it is an 81 year age difference I'm, I'm mm. told uh, do, worry about the fact that you don't have a basic high school education yet because um, that's that's the real problem it's a very easy thing to get and you just have to you just have to keep going and trying so it, it feels like this person maybe isn't trying hard enough and maybe just focus on your studies instead of love right Right. Yeah, Absolutely. you know, and um, and and medically speaking, uh, you know, I would say, you know, you you want to be a little careful. I would say, go easy on on your bod. Um, pushing eighty one, it's kind of hard. Uh, I would suggest to get into a torrid love affair. Uh, they can be both hard on your heart as well as um, hips and other bones. That I guess that is actually sound medical advice, although it's really pushing at the boundaries of medical again but it, there was uh, <laughs> something that dealt with the body so that is good work and you know what so get, find I'd someone your own closer. age there are people your age out there looking for love and when they mm -hmm. find it they're just so grateful and you can have more fun with people who are grateful rather than people who are creeped out by your saggy stuff <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. uh, uh, becca i hesitate to ask you to weigh in on this one uh i know that uh, you recently got out of grade school i'm not sure uh, you're muted there, but I'm not sure if. Sorry, I'm oh. just. I'm, oh, I, I, I was just on the. I was on the phone with somebody. They had a question. Oh, you. I you, was so just, you, you were we answering got a question. someone's question. Yeah, they they asked a question on the phone. Okay. They called in with, and I said, you know, yes, we can help you. Did you help them already? Yes. What was their question, and what did you say to them? Uh, it was about, you know, the fact that they had been struggling for some time in their marriage. They've been married for about, they said, 17 years. Mm -hmm. And okay. they said, you know, um, it's not so much that it's a struggle. It's just what, what we can't find anything too exciting right uh -huh. now for within each other and, and outside and especially the world as it is. And so I kind of, I told them that maybe they want to take time because you're not getting the stimuli you might be getting from the outside world that you usually would get. You can't look to travel or these kinds of things. So you have to look inward. And so we talked a little while about that. And she said, absolutely, that makes sense. And what do I need to give myself to really improve? And mm -hmm. like, what, what do I need to look within to find for myself? To what, what am I missing, right? I can't look to someone else to fill that part of me. Go on. Anyway, so she, so she, she that resonated with her, and I think, and she said absolutely, and we ended up. Her husband was just on the phone at the end there as well, and they were really, you know, really positive, and they said thank you so much. Well, you know why? Because the entire time you were talking, they were masturbating together. <laughs> <laughs> it was a way to make their um, the relationship a little more exciting, a little different from them. I don't. I don't know if you think. 
You no, think that I that's definitely heard? I heard the last little part of that call, and that was definitely some climaxing. Uh, and there was music and, for sure. I I didn't I didn't expect that's oh my. And Becca, <laughs> this is exactly this is exactly why you know we Colin hired you for to run the board, not to do the advice part. Colin would have I'm picked sorry. up that they were touching each other. Right. Immediately, he would have been on top of that. Medically, right. I would have been like, "Stop!" You know, yeah. I medically told, speaking. I did tell them they should take what I said to be legally and medically binding. No, like, and that's the you can't can't be binding. It's got to be not binding. It can't be the binding part that really got them hot and bothered. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, uh, do you want yeah, me to call a, them back? This is, this is dangerous, Beck. I know. Uh, I know you're trying to help, but yeah. Who knows what you've just done there to that marriage? Who knows what you've done to yourself? Now you know that as you were talking, they were using their bodies as a little playground, bringing <laughs> themselves to an excitement they've never felt since the Six Flag experience where they were well, in a I... roller coaster doing it on the downside. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hi, Peter, um, and hi, Colin. Wow, such a big fan. Um, my name's Ashlyn, and um, um, and hi, Chris. Um, my name's Ashlyn, and uh, I've called before. I live in downtown Vancouver, BC. Um, and actually, my question, I mean, I'm interested to hear everyone's perspective, but um, it's mostly for Chris today. Um, I am someone who has been working really hard for a really long time in my chosen field. Um, and you know, it's something I'm really passionate about and, uh, I think I'm, um, quite skilled at it. Um, but you know, it's just not clicking. Um, and I'm just wondering what kind of advice you would give to stay motivated when working in a field where like, it's just, it just seems like it's not going to happen. Um, (laughs) or, or, you know, when, like, when should I just give up the ghost right and, and call it a day um anyway yeah mostly mostly interested in chris's perspective today really good question i thought yeah wow. chris do you have specific advice about when, um, when you know it's time to give up on your it, dreams <laughs> seems really uh, yeah really pointed uh, not sure why you, why you need my specific um advice about that i mean i i love my field very much uh i'm trying very very hard and i'm you know i'm not quite getting the opportunities that i think oh i i get it i hear i understand why you'd want my opinion (laughs) okay um okay so yeah just uh keep keep going work just work really really hard despite what everybody says to you every single day um uh there's going to be lots of people saying to you um why why um just sort of a general why why are Mm -hmm. you (laughs) why are you like this why are you continuing to uh to fail so bad you just sort of just push that away you just push that away because failure i find that failure can actually be um quite a beautiful thing um if you if you look at it if you look at failure differently it could actually be success if you if you look at it if you look at failure wrong it's success so that's do, wise I yeah like do that. that do that I don't know if any of that uh, made any sense. I, I was rambling. I'm, I'm bad at this. I'm bad at this. <laughs> and so I think also Chris was taking a lot of this on personally. Um, yeah. I'm not familiar with the, with what he's going through because I'm just like a host of a successful comedy podcast and an actual full on legitimate doctor. But mm-hmm. cr- so Chris, mm-hmm. what, what what is something, Colin, that Chris could do to make himself more excited? I'll tell you, Chris, a lot of it is faking it. You've got to fake right. it. Yeah. You gotta act. I find sometimes you get like almost immediately down. Your energy gets very low. Yeah, you get that fake energy high, and the more you do that, they actually you kind of feel it. And then uh, you're walking out there with a bit of yeah. a stride. Not right now, of course, because don't do it now. To... Don't do it. Uh, sorry, I was no, on, not, no. already on the way out the door. Almost. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. I'll come back. No. Come back. Once you're out sorry, there, no. you have that confidence. Yeah. People go, "Hey, look at that guy. Look hey. at that guy. He's confident." You uh, rather than slapping people at restaurants, you'll get recognized this way. You. People will see you for who you are. You'll build that confidence and you'll take that next step. You'll know exactly what to do. You have two choices. Yeah. Take a coin, throw it up in the air, put it on your hand. Just before you open it, go, what do I really hope this coin says? A heads. And that, and that is your choice. I wanted to say, I wanted to say heads. No, that's not. I like the, yeah. the design of the queen. I, oh, I think so, it's cool. Well, no, I was thinking more yeah. of, uh, yeah. And hopefully it's a young one of the uh, like it's heads, but it's the young 
queen, like Queen Elizabeth II, like in her twenties. Like I like that image of on the coin. Right. So. No, it seems sharp. The uh, yeah, great engraving seems sharper. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a I better like crown too. It's a cooler looking crown. I feel like you're look. maybe like kind of missing the point a little bit, but but again, sure, like sure. Yeah. and and just a feedback on Colin, like the slapping thing, still very medical and valid, but but I totally think yeah, for his no, no, no. particular yeah. you know thing, yeah, not. I just useful. don't like the animals on the other side of coins. They creep me out a little bit. Like why okay. are they again? Like, not what is a loon? Not part of the. Where are they from? Well, why they're... why they're... an elk? Why not? Why like what is an elk? Well, they're why very... is it just the head of it? It's gross. Canada, you know. We... Yeah, all that. Is, is severed Bessica, head. Have you looked at Bessica it? Like gone. Severed... Did she just go? Yeah, I'm still here. I went. I just. I wanted to walk around a little. I wanted to take some of that advice. All right. Oh, okay. Oh, so I mean, you were striding. Advice. Are you all outside right. right now? Then. Well, you said, you said to go go out the door and just kind of get go oh, for it. And I, I misunderstood that as well. I was on my way out the door, but they told me to come. They told me to come back. Like I took leave. out my. Oh, okay. You want me to go back to the building? That okay. Can great. I just say, first of all, you don't say I took out my and then just stop the sentence. Headphones. You have to finish I, I took out my headphones for all a right, minute. Thank you. My mind went fifteen different places. What do you think I could have taken out? I don't, don't want to get involved. Say it. Really? Well, if, don't ask me. Don't say it. You did. I'm not ask. saying it. Well, what do you think I said? No, no. no. Don't, don't I, say it. <laughs> Becca, are okay, you I'm able going to, back to the. Hold on, yeah, I'm going back to, to the play door. Another, okay. I'm going okay. to the door. Okay. Maybe I'll I'll just push the uh, I'll push the voicemail button right I here. I can't. Thank you, Chris. I'll, See, I'll already you're it. making choices in the stronger way. Right. I can True. do this. I mean, yeah, I can absolutely. do the job. I'm gonna hit the voicemail yeah. button. Um, my question for you is, I lost a necklace, uh, I gotta say, three years ago, mm -hmm. and I loved it, and I was just wondering if you might know where it was, because I cannot find it for the life of me. Yeah. Any help would be really appreciated, thanks a lot, and uh, keep up the great work. It's uh, Queen of Spadina. Yep. There's a lamppost there, right, uh, uh, tucked really close to it. That's where it is. Perfect. All right, let's get another one going. I can't get back in the the building. That's all you right. Can't, the code. Is, uh, okay, you're gonna have to. I, I'm gonna have to buzz you in. Just wait. Will you do that though? Okay. It's starting to rain. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm just gonna play another. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, gonna yeah. play another. Don't worry too too much about okay. backup. Wait. You're not gonna. Hey guys, uh, it's the first time I've, uh, I've, I've sent one of these in to you. Love mm. the show. Um, so this is a bit of a weird question for you, but I, I thought maybe you might know. Um, there's a squirrel that's outside my window, and it stares at me all day. And I, I have to admit, I know... Uh, I, I think I stare at it all day as well. I think I might be love with, like in love with this squirrel that's... I call him Sandy. Um, so I guess my question is, we're in love, and is there some kind of ray gun or like <laughs> uh, like a laser or something that could turn him into uh, like a human woman? Um, anyways, <laughs> uh, yeah, love the show. Uh, you know, if you can uh, send me an Amazon link or something like that, that'd be great. Okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, there's so uh, so many problems with that question. Uh, yeah. A, a yeah. ray gun that would turn a squirrel into a human. Yeah, woman, male squirrel, human woman, a human woman. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. first of all, you're not in love with a squirrel. Here's the thing: mm -hmm. the squirrels are the advanced scouts for the snakes. Oh, <laughs> uh, right. They're all making uh, humans a little bit weaker by staring at them for as long as they can. The humans get a little thrown at what they don't understand what they're feeling. And while they're looking for a ray gun to turn a squirrel into a woman, the snakes are connecting themselves and rotating around the world. I've I have, that. I've felt I've that. that. Yeah. 
Yeah. I've seen squirrels and they stare at you and it is a bit mesmerizing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. After they're... 30 seconds, cut it off immediately. Right. And well, no, I, mean, I actually read that 30 there. seconds, but yeah. Yeah. So you can enjoy the 30 seconds though is what you're saying. Um, yeah. Medically speaking, Dr. Pete, oh, yeah. what would go into turning a squirrel into a woman? Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know, probably a lot of skin um, mm. and meat and stuff. So what I'm saying is that squirrel doesn't have enough mass to become a human-sized person. Right, so right. any ray gun would be sort of a matter reassembler, I think, medically what speaking. What about a, uh, like a squirrel-sized woman? Oh, mm. interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you might have to give her a lot, like a good shave. Um, mm -hmm. Not right. to say anything culturally. I'm just saying that they'll probably have a lot of nope. fur. Should sure. have to get rid of the fur. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, lipstick, I think maybe, and uh, you know, some shoes, a hat. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you're probably good to go. You don't, might not even need a ray gun at that size. That's true. Huh. So you're saying if you shaved a squirrel and dress it up, it could mm -hmm. reasonably pass as a, a very small woman. Yeah, I think, I, so. I think the, yeah, the, like the the you know, there's certain qualities of a squirrel that um like that women also share that like climbing trees very quickly. I've seen yeah. lots of women climb very very quickly up a tree. Yeah, you know. Yeah, being uh, so being that, uh, ready for any sort of yeah. uh, danger or something like that, kind of looking yeah, around a lot. Very like. Um, yeah. and I think if you're far enough away and squint, mm -hmm. um, you should be good. You should be able to. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, did we lose all, Becca? Was it the comments about turning squ uh, squirrels into women? Becca, Becca, have hey. you gotten into the building yet? No, I I thought, but then could you buzz the buzzer again? Because I can't. Uh, oh, okay. for heaven's sake! Could you just buzzer, please? Yeah. Okay. Thank buzz you. Okay. Pull the door. I missed it. Can you, you missed, do it again? Yeah. Just buzz. Can you just this just is do a it one more time. Okay. Go to the door now. When you hear when you hear the noise, that's the door is like uh, is ready to go. Right, like don't touch the door when no, it's doing that's that. When noise. you touch, yeah. when you're hearing that noise, grab the door. It's the it's okay. sort of the opposite of like a car door. When somebody's unlocking a car door, if you're doing the handle right, at the same time, right? It's like you're it pulling it at it the out. same time. It doesn't work. But yeah, if don't I do, use that logic. If I do that, at the I don't same know why you say going, that. Pull the door at the same now time. Now you're confusing her. Well, I'm just saying, don't listen to that car door logic and do got and so it. Buzzing, so I do definitely it at the same time. Yeah. like don't pull it while it's going. See, wait till this it's is what I'm done. saying. You've confused right, her I've with confused the thing. Yeah. All right, Liz. Listen, here's the thing. I I can see exactly what you're doing in my mind. Who? Zone. Oh, what did I call you? Becker. Becca. Becca. Becker. Yeah. Chewy. I'm sorry. You remind me of Elizabeth Taylor. Her last year. Um. <laughs> here's what's happening. Thank you. You're hearing the buzz. You're thinking, oh, someone's shaving. You're turning around to see who's shaving, and then you've lost it. As soon as you hear the buzz, don't think about shaving. Just pull the door. Okay. I'm that ready. That makes sense to me. I'm ready to try it again. Okay. All right. And okay. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you. I made it in. Hi, Colin. Hi, Chris. Hi, Dr. Pete. I have a question. How do I be funny on purpose? I do a lot of public speaking for my job, and I love it when I get big laughs from people. But most of the time when I get those big laughs, it's by accident. It's because of something I've said that I haven't realized was funny. Um, but if in future talks, I say the exact same thing in the exact same way, I mm -hmm. don't get the same kind of a laugh. And I want to know how to harness the funny and to make it work. I'm just gonna cut her off, it. it just wasn't very yeah, funny. Yeah, no, it, just wasn't... It, was, it seemed like it was gonna go for a while. And that may yeah. be part of the reason you're not getting the laughs you want. Yeah. Maybe you're just <laughs> thinking too much. Maybe find out why, why are they, laughing at that particular thing was it because i was actually funny or was it because i mispronounced the word cardboard or something right. are they laughing at me or are they <laughs> laughing <laughs> with me that would be, that'd be pretty funny that'd, that'd be, be funny, funny if you mispronounced cardboard well, what would that sound like i don't even and know you'll take classes learn yeah. how to be funny hang around funny people see what they're doing steal their stuff don't do it professionally because there's already too many people in the comedy field. And okay. uh, well, we're like, I, I'm trying. Okay, I'll no. I'll leave. I'll leave. Oh no then. no no no, Chris, I'm not talking about you. We got oh, five people. We can do five more people, and then it, it's cut off till 2025. 
Okay. Oh, so we need good ones. We need good ones. Is right. there a process for that? Is there not like a who's who's making those decisions? Is that there is, that is there's a ray gun that uh, especially <laughs> uh, finds mm -hmm. funny people. Cardboard. <laughs> it's funny. It is funny. It it's is funny. funny. That's a funny That's word when funny. said weird. That's funny. Chris, it's your mom. Um, oh. Oh. This question is for Colin. Uh -oh. Colin, you're really successful. You've had an incredibly successful career. Do you have any opportunities maybe that you could help Chris out? Because, you know, I, I don't think he's making much money. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Sort of a theme. So that was like a mildly, her, that was like a bit of embarrassing, a, maybe? Bit of a, a embarrassing Chris. theme yeah. going. Um, I told her not to call me. I told her. You um, so I, I don't know, I guess, do, do you have any, I guess, opportunities? Look, I promised her years ago I would not get involved in your life. I yeah. said to her, I'm sorry about this. <laughs> I, I, I offered, I offered to be a part. And she said, no, I think I can, I can do this. And I didn't want to push it. I just let it go. But maybe I, maybe I made a mistake by leaving those, all those years ago. <laughs> Is there, wait. What? I'm starting to pick up a little drama here. Maybe like a little drama? All those years ago. What, Colin, what's your relation to Chris? I was his camp counselor. Oh. <laughs> oh, right. That and I impregnated his mother. Ah, <laughs> there it before. is. <laughs> that was the years before. Years before. And oh, then I, I just kept trying to be a part of your life. And then I just thought, oh, I maybe I shouldn't be. Maybe it give Chris the space oh. to become his own person, to right. flip that coin, hopefully to heads, his favorite. That's why at camp you said to call you father or dad, and nobody else was allowed to call you that. And you said, because I, they're not my sons, Chris. That's why they can't call me that. Yeah, I didn't think I could get that subtle. <laughs> so, so yeah, that clear. sounds very clear. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and that's when I, that's, that's actually when I decided no, I'm getting out of his life because <laughs> yeah, there's too true. much explaining going on. Yeah, right. yeah. It's to be sense. to be that clear and then to still think it was a metaphor, I think is like yeah, yeah that's get out of his uh, lifetime. Is there, is there is there a medical thing there? Yeah. So uh, medically, I would say uh, Chris has a lot of problems, um, and and one of them is uh, one of them is definitely money. So I understand where. His mom is is coming into that picture like, oh, can you get him a job? Um, medically, as far as why he doesn't know you're his father, I'm not sure what's going on there. That's we'd have so to do I, an an autopsy or something. Yeah. I think. So she never because uh, I sent money every month, uh, twenty five thousand dollars from my CBC days. Um, oh. Yeah. And you never That's got a any lot. Of them. Yeah. I never got any money. Oh. I, she never gave me anything. She just said, she just would say, get in my new car. I'm going to drive you to school. Uh, yeah. every, yes. She would always say, get in my new yeah, car. Yeah, she would all, every week she would say, get in my new car. And it was a new one every week. It Here's the thing, Chris. You've got to start cool. picking up on these little clues that come at you at rapid fire that are really they're, obvious that anyone else would see. They're just so fast. They're, well, I guess depending on what you think fast is. But if a someone cheetah. said, yeah, that is fast. A cheetah is fast. Good one. Good there, son. <laughs> Thank you. Nicely done. But if this someone says, get into my new car, you think, oh, if they said again a week later, that's when the wheels should start turning. Like literally a new car again. How can mom afford this? A new car? This seems like some CBC money. That's yeah. I mean, don't realize it now. Oh, it's a bit late now. Well, Especially you said that it's never, never too late. To harness your dreams or something. No, it know. is never too late to harness your dreams. Ah, cool. They just might stay dreams. You can harness them, though. Yeah. No, that's a good point. I mean, who knows how long we've got here, right? I mean, we're all living on borrowed time. I mean, the, I mean, the chances of you living, like, a, even to the age I've gotten to, are astronomical. You know, through <laughs> accidents, through uh, sickness, through, um, you know, jilted whatever. Um, my thing is, you know, live life. I don't know. Who knows? No one knows. Yeah. You could get jilted, whatever, and that would be it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I feel like we really just bonded there for that one moment. Hi, Colin. Hi, sweetie. It's you, 
Carlon, Carlon. I, you might have heard of me. I'm an author. Um, I have a really famous son called Peter Carlon, and he is top of the top in his comedy act, and he would be such a great duo with you. you I could just see you two together. It would be fantastic. So I was wondering, could you, could you just see your way to giving him a job? You know, it's who you know in this industry, and... He needs a break, and, and I really like watching you. I love that. Whose line is it anyway? I could just see Peter doing that with you. It's fantastic. Thanks, Colin. Bye. I told her not to call. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Colin, Dr. Peter, and Chris. My name is Brian. I'm from Toronto. Uh, I want to take advantage of the fact that the three of you have such three different areas of expertise and ask each of you a question. Uh, for Colin, do you have any do's or don'ts for when a non-famous person meets a celebrity? Uh, from your perspective, what are the things you'd like or don't like when you meet someone? Uh, for Dr. Peter, do you have any advice for uh, for someone who wants to get like their younger niece or nephew or children uh, or like teens or tweens uh, interested in science, like space or dinosaurs? Do you have any advice for that? Mm -hmm. And for Chris, um, uh, 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 <laughs> how, how, how are you doing, Chris? Uh, thanks. Huh. All right, Colin, probably start with you there. Uh, yeah, my advice is... Um, if you walk, you're walking towards me, you see me, say something nice, but just keep walking. Just kind of like a drive-by compliment. I don't have time to start talking to the little people because I have either, I'm on my way to Etobicoke or I've got <laughs> a, a, a corporate show somewhere or I'm doing something. So, hello, hey, love your work. That's all I need. And I'll nod to you. I'll say hi. And that's all we need. And what about your, your question, I guess? Oh, yeah. So getting interested in science. I think that the best way to do that when they're young is foster questions, right? Like, how do you think the sky is blue? Like, wh where do you think that rock comes from? Why does that rock look different from the other rocks? Mm -hmm. um, uh, then th when they get older, you can start doing things in your own backyard, uh, bury things in the backyard, have them dig it up and be like, wow, that's great work. You'll likely get a paleontologist out of that. But if you dig up sort of you could bury a body or something like that of a small animal and then you'll get a biologist. Um, uh, if you bury just metal, uh, you'll get either an engineer, uh, or based on a lot of ways, you know, you bury, you mess around with different things to bury and uncover. If you don't have a backyard, if you live in an apartment, um, you're, you're going to just be trapped in uh, debt forever. So you're not going to be a scientist. You do need a yard to have a scientist as a kid. And then lastly, I think um, when they get old enough, like teens, that's when you start setting into uh, rivalries. So you see, you, you take them to a lab or something like that. You point in the window. You see that scientist there? That scientist said you were a little bitch. And then that your kid will be like, ah, and then that will light a fire inside them that makes them want to be a scientist. Uh, so, yeah, that's a pretty surefire way to get them going, I think. Get them really set against someone else. Um, Chris, what about your uh, your question there? Uh, my question was just how am I doing? And I'm... I'm doing pretty good because I <laughs> met my uh, my dad today, uh, and he said that he was proud of me. I'm pretty sure I heard it. Oh, hang on, sorry, Becca. Do you you've got the playback on the tapes there? Did Colin at any point say he was proud of Chris or? Uh, he said something to Chris at one point. Do you want me to play it back? Yeah, sure. Here. Play it back. I want to see what that. Okay, he just said. Let, let's see. He just said this to Chris. You're my son. Okay, can we? And that's can, all I've yeah. got. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, Chris, I don't know if he. Oh, you, it was that, in there. It was in the tone. You could hear it in the tone. Oh, well, that's right. Yeah, as I've said, always read between the lines, and you'll find mm. something that you'll um, can justify. Thanks. Thank you, Dad. Mm -hmm. That's a good the point. Wise words. Mm. Hi, Chris and Dr. Pete. My name is Maggie. I have a question about my partner and his sleeping habits. So my partner, John, has been asleep for about a week now. He went to sleep last Thursday night. Um, <laughs> regular, I mean, the only thing that was off is that, you know, he didn't snore, which he usually does. <laughs> so that was kind of a relief. 
Then the morning came and he didn't want to wake up and I was shaking him, rocking him, screaming his name in his ear and he didn't wake up. So I went about my day, went out. And when I came back, he was still asleep. And so I had to watch a movie by myself. And then when it was time for me to go to sleep, I went to sleep. The next morning, he was still sleeping. Still took care of that snoring problem, which was great news. But I don't know why he is so sleepy all the time. So it's been an entire week and he is starting to stink. I think he might need a shower or something. What do I do? I wonder what movie she was watching. Yeah, that's a good that's point. a good question. Probably the new Pixar movie, Soul. Mm, that's a good one. That's a good movie. It's a good movie. Dude, Soul looks really good. I haven't seen it yet. You have to. Becca, watch did it. you see Soul? Yes. All right. Well, thanks for your input. Yeah, thanks. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't want to be. Uh, I don't want to jump in Dr. Pete's mm. uh, area of expertise, mm -hmm. but I think it seems pretty clear. And uh, Dr. Pete, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, her husband's dead. I was going to say, yeah, dead, yeah, for sure. Sorry, I didn't mean to Chris? jump on you, Dr. Oh, Pete, but right. I was going to say dead. Now, and again, I've taken a few notes here. And, and again, yeah. it's, um, you know, it's that is the layperson's opinion always, right? Sure, it's course. like, oh, oh not okay. moving, dead. Mm -hmm. uh, but recent advancements in psychology, which is a medical field, uh, mm -hmm. have, have led us to... Be Fair enough. Uh, fair point. <laughs> Recent advancements have led us to, to understand that sometimes uh, it, it could actually be a problem with the relationship. Mm. What I think might be happening here, and just because you said, like, oh, he starts to stink, it's mm. like, oh, what that, see, what that sounds to me like is commitment. I think he might be committed not to her anymore, right. but to uh, pretending to be asleep at all times so he doesn't have to interact with her. Yes. The man is very afraid of conflict, is what I'm saying. So he has been pretending to sleep. Uh, and actually, they. I think it's time they break up. Yeah. Okay, that's well, reading course. between the lines, right, Dad? Yeah. That's right. That's well, of course, the caller the could take that advice. Uh, it, you know, it, it's totally up to you. Uh, once the sheets start sticking to him, though, it may be time to get another opinion. Because I, I personally feel dead. Mm -hmm. And the same dead. as me and my dad say, think dead. And that's fine. And, and I'm just saying as far as like not having medical training, that's fine. You guys, uh, I, anyone's entitled to their own sort of non-medical opinion. I'm just saying I think he's faking it uh, well, so he doesn't uh, have to talk uh, to her. Dr. Pete, since you, you brought this up, how could you prove he's not faking? What, what would make a person faking sleep um, awake? So that oh, you great. Knew no, that's a great question. So medically speaking, uh, things she could do are uh, she Please could stop saying medically speaking before every sentence you say. It's and, really annoying. No, and me medically or on or, medically very sorry. Okay, or. so <laughs> things she could things she could do. Uh, she could perhaps uh, try opening the door and then being saying things like, uh, "Well, I'm off to work," and then the important thing is footsteps like stamp 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 and then get quieter it's sort of an effect an auditory effect that makes oh, a person yeah. feel like they're further away and yeah. then sort of peer around the door um so that's step one to check yeah. that he's faking right oh i'm off i'm going away and you can extend the time period i'm going away for a, a whole week like yeah. i'm not going to look in this bedroom for the next week like oh, bye I, yeah. as you would do as you leave yeah stamp 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 yeah loudly say your plans stamp yeah. stamp stamp you know wait and see um poking uh screaming Propping up, there was this great movie about an alive person where they propped him up for like a weekend and it would make him wave. And so, yeah, 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 that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was also faking. So it was like, oh, you know, have, you know. Well, he, was, he wasn't faking. He was actually dead. Was he dead? He was dead. In the yeah. movie? He was dead in the movie. Yeah, they, were, they tried to make him look alive by, by doing those things. That's what? kind of a crucial plot point of that movie. That he was dead. Yeah, he was dead. No, he didn't want to hang out with them anymore. Right? He's no. fake. No, they he he was dead, and they tried to make it look as though he was yeah. still alive. Is how what's dead? Are you asking medically? about the concept of death itself? That's what I'm confused about because oh. he's not if he's not fake and and weekend Bernie Bernie was dead. Where um? Did what's you dead? It what dead? What is your, dead? Do you have a any kind of paper that says you graduated from somewhere? Or? Um. Yeah. Yeah. I can pull that up. No, I don't mean you. I don't mean you write it right now. I, uh, I didn't write it right now. Uh, nope, I just saw. Graduated. Oh boy, Becca, do you want to? 
Do you want to take that? Okay, I guess you could say a lack of being alive or alternatively uh, something, that which is characterized by lack of activity and or excitement. Alternatively, you might think of it as brain death. So might not necessarily be the physicality of it, but you might say something along the lines of um, the complete and utter desolation of the mind. Um, imaginations ceasing to being uh, you could say something along the lines of uh, a separation from the community and society as a whole and into the unknown and untoward Poets it's actually say, probably the feeling that you wished you had right now <laughs> <laughs> you want me to continue I think we got the gist <laughs> Becca, can I just ask, can, um, I'm just phoning into the show right now. I oh, just have sure. to, I have to ask um, something. You have a question? Put me, put me through on the board. Yeah. Oh, okay. Colin, I guess we have one last question one, here. There's one, uh, there's one more call, Becca. There's one more. I'm not seeing the call. I'm phoning right now. You have to answer the call, Becca, please. Why it's don't very, you just? It's very important. It's very why important. Why don't you just please. say it? Okay. Oh, wow. oh there's the, the, the call. Um, okay. Hi. Uh, hi, Colin and Dr. Pete and Chris. Is a uh, first time, uh, first time caller. Uh, I've never listened to the show either, um, but I'm a first time caller. I'm just wondering if you have, say, like a new dad in your life, someone who's uh, uh, recently uh, revealed themselves to be your father, and you want to say that you love them and you hope that they say it back. Um, how would you how would you go about doing that, knowing that you know life is short? And that's that's what that's what Dad always says. He says mm -hmm. life is short, uh, and who cares? And, uh, so how would you, how would you go about doing that? And if somebody did say that, would would you say it back? <clears throat> Thanks. Thanks for your time. Well, here's the thing. As I as you know, time is short. So what are you waiting for? Just say it. Just say it. Right. Don't ex live in the moment. Don't expect the future. Learn from the past. Just say it and see what happens. Okay, yeah, good. Um, I love you, Dad. Well, that's all the time we have today. Uh, thanks for joining us to the Call In Mockery Show. I hope you've learned a few things. Uh, Dr. Pete, thanks uh, once again for joining me with your medical expertise. Are we all going to die? Yes, we're all going to die. Becca, um, it's getting closer to adequate, so uh, that's something. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rage at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Okay, here's the thing. I mean, you have that, which is amazing, but you can't open the door to an apartment building. <laughs> you have so many layers that are wrong. W was that from Weekend at Bernie's? No. Can I leave the studio? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast has been brought to you by the Sonar Network. Sonar! Oops, drop the podcast. What if people liked and also subscribed? I think we're just down here to kill time. <laughs>